Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. May I give love shout out to all the subscribers and followers of my channel. And if you are new to my channel, please. <laughs> Forget to ring the bell buttons for the next notification. We like leave a comment, subscribe. Or subscribe. Oh, wow. Our lesson for today is about conditional statement or the if and then statement. And this is for Mathematics 8, Week 5, and this is your teacher, Marike Adon. Conditional statement. Definition A conditional statement is a statement that can be written in if then form. If blank, then blank. Example If your feet smell and your nose runs, then your belt your belt upside down. Conditional statements have two parts. The hypothesis is the part of conditional statement that follows if when written in if then form. The hypothesis is given information or the condition. The conclusion is a part of an if then statement that follows then. When written in if then form, the conclusion is the result of the given information. In writing conditional statements, conditional statements can be written in if then form to emphasize which part is the hypothesis and which is conclusion. Turn the subject into parenthesis. In, uh, sorry, in, turn the subject into hypothesis. Example number one. Vertical angles are congruent. That can be written as, in conditional statements, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Example two, seals swim. It can be written as, if an animal is a seal, then it swims. If then versus implies. Another way of writing an if-then statement is using word implies. If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Two angles are vertical implies they are congruent. Okay, conditional statements can be true or false. A conditional statement is false only when the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. A counterexample is an example used to show that a statement is not always true and therefore false. Okay, let's have the statement. If you live in Virginia, then you live in Richmond. 
Is there a counter example? Yes. All right. Okay, let's have here a counter example. I live in Virginia, but I live in Glen Allen. Therefore, this, this statement is false. We have symbolic logic. Symbols can be used to modify or connect statements. Symbols for hypothesis and conclusion. The hypothesis is represented by P. And the conclusion are represented by Q. If P, then Q, or P implies Q. Okay, P implies Q. This is used to represent if P, if P, then Q, or P implies Q. Example, P, for P is the hypothesis, a, a number is prime. Q is a number has exactly two divide divisors. Okay, so P here stands for the hypothesis where Q is for the conclusion. So for P, um, uh, P then Q, if a number is prime, then exactly two divisors, or it, it, then it has exactly two divisors. Okay, this symbol is used to represent the word not. Example one. Okay, we have the I put P, the angle is obtuse, so not, the angle is not obtuse. Note, P means that an angle could, could be acute, right, or straight. Sample number two, P, I am not happy. Okay, I am not happy. Okay, so this symbol, uh, infinity or it this word not. Okay. P took the not out, it would have been double negative, not not. <laughs> okay. Okay, this symbol. Is used to represent the word end. Example, P, a number is even. Q, a number is divisible by 3. So P and Q, a number is even and it's divisible by 3, like 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and I choose. This symbol is used to represent the word or. Example, P or your, hep or your hypothesis, a number is even. For Q or the conclusion, a number is divisible by 3. So P or Q, a number is even or is divisible by 3. This is 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, and etc. Okay, so we have three dots here. It's used to represent the word therefore. Example, therefore, this statement is false. Therefore, the statement is false. We have different forms of conditional statements. Converse, switch, the hypothesis, and conclusion. Okay. P, then 
P and Q, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. If two angles are congruent, then they are vertical. See? Nagkabaliktad. So, in the first, uh, if two vert angles are vertical, so if P then Q, then we have, uh, they are congruent uh, on Q. So, whereas our uh, hypothesis, I conclusion is first, no? So, if two angles are congruent, then they are vertical. Okay. We have converse. Next form is inverse. State the opposite of both hypothesis and conclusion. If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. We are going to form that in the inverse. If two angles are not vertical, then they are not congruent. We have contrapositive. In contrapositive, switch the hypothesis and conclusion and state their opposites. If, in our example, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. If you can write that into a contrapositive, if two angles are not congruent, then they are not vertical. Another, contrapositives are logical, equivalent to original conditional statement. So, P, then Q is true. Then, P is not Q. Therefore, uh, your P is not true. If P, and then Q is false, then uh, not Q then not P is false. Biconditional. When a conditional statement and its converse are both true, the two statements may be combined. Use the phrase if and only if, sometimes abbreviated as if if. Okay, example statements. If an angle is right, then it has a measure of 90 degrees. In converse, if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is right angle. In biconditional, an angle is right if and only if it measures 90 degrees. Okay. So for questions and clarifications, please leave your comment at the comment section. Remember, gratitude is the best attitude. And mathematics is not just about numbers. Much of it is a problem solving and reasoning. Thank you very much, everyone. Good day.